All right. Here's Hanu the Hyundai Mekinen. And, and uh, Aqualung, aka Ken Bleaky, or vice versa. Overcoming difficulties through technology. <laughs> and we are here to t today to talk to you, uh, the the people listening to this, about the Robot Master cartoons that we did do together. That's right. We'll um, be going over some things that might have been asked by a, a lot of people uh, through comments and and messages and the like. Just going over yep. each one here and there. Yeah, and of course, uh, well, we uh, we call them the Robot Master cartoons, but I call them the Aquatoons, which is my little uh, stupid shorthand for when I create all the video files. And it's actually terrible because uh, we started making these for the Mega Man 2, uh, for your Mega Man 2 review. We didn't do one for your Mega Man 1 review. Uh, and that always me messes up with my numbering, so I may start talking about Aquatoon 6 when I'm talking about 5 because it's Mega Man 6 and things like that. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the number sequencing doesn't really add up too well, but uh, I guess I guess <laughs> if a push comes to shove, we can always back it up. And uh, and if we ever do a cartoon with the first Robot Masters, we'll just go back and call it number uh, 1 and have it be a prequel of sorts. Yeah, and it's always weird because it's a bit of a voice acting challenge because we always have to cover all we always cover all the robot masters pretty much in every cartoon except we didn't do number one but I did the poker game cartoon of course now recently so that sort of covered all the Mega Man 1 robot masters well it's a challenge for you because you're the one that does the voices for all the robots I just do the voice myself so it's uh... yeah you just do yourself you just do yourself you do or you do Aqualung your uh, alter ego, your cartoon alter ego. Right, and I really, uh, it's a, it's it's a whole different character. I'm really uh, having to delve into my acting abilities to talk like myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't sound like myself either when I'm making my any of my cartoons or videos or anything, <laughs> and that's because, but that's just because of the language barrier or thing. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe we should talk a little bit about you know why we started making these in the first place. Well, it, uh, I'd say it goes back to um, you know long before uh, the Mega Man 2 review. It was, in fact, it was not not long into when I started even making reviews where we stumbled upon each other's work. I'm not even sure who found who, but um, I found you. I found you. I found your Super Pitfall review, and I just fell in love with that sexy monotone voice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just thought your reviews were though. really I, great, I, I, I think... in spite of your monotone voice, because you really just caught my attention immediately. I, mm. I really thought, though, that I that I, that I found yours first, but nevertheless, uh, however that might have worked, um, you know, I was a fan of your Robot Master cartoons, you were a fan of my walkthroughs, and so, um, yeah. uh, you know, Mega Man 1 came and went uh, without even, you know, thinking about doing a cartoon and then uh, for some reason or another I don't know where the hell it came from but it just dawned upon me maybe it was my uh, little um, desire to be in cartoons going back to when I was a kid uh, that made me think <laughs> oh maybe um, you know uh, I, I could collaborate with you I've uh, you know talked to other YouTubers about collaborations in the past and uh, so I just threw it out there said hey you know want to make a, a, a hybrid cartoon teaser thing because you already had your Mega Man cartoons I had um, yeah. you know uh, the the Mega Man 2 review coming up so I just threw it out there and uh, I think what I had was the, the idea for the press conference and that yeah. was pretty much it like uh, the the jokes the majority of the jokes were yours I think that uh, I threw out a couple of them here and well there. I think you, you you came up with that line where you uh, where uh, I, I think it was you who came up with the idea about metal man asking what was your favorite metal band yeah or something like that yeah I think that that one was one of them but the uh, um, the the whole uh, the the airman joke I think was yours or at least it started off as it and um, and the whole cartoon in general really was a uh, definitely by far the most low-key uh, presentation it was the majority of it was like in one shot with little alterations here and there yeah that that's the that's the one thing I kind of regret about that is it, it, I, it because it, I because I draw these things on MS paint naturally and it looked really good when I was drawing it on MS paint 
And I, then I didn't realize that once it goes on YouTube and it becomes that tiny little thing, because I, I drew it much bigger on my computer, and then I realized, oh, crap, you know, nobody's going to be able to <laughs> appreciate the details or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the size and difference definitely. Mm. Uh, I, I usually use my uh, monitor uh, for the for when I'm doing the editing on the reviews to be... I, I, I zoom it up, zoom it a lot closer, and then when I'm watching it, it's weird because everything's a lot smaller than I remember. But, um... Yeah. Which is sometimes sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes in the cartoons, if you make a little little mistake, you know, it it'll become even smaller so people won't see it. But for that cartoon, I think it didn't work quite the quite you know the right way around it. But the you know jumping ahead to the Mega Man six six cartoon, I noticed a lot of people even people noticed it before I even noticed the uh, the changing of the uh, the the Japanese symbols in the background and Yamato Man. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that one. <laughs> scene. Uh, but, yeah, well, that was just that was that was a one of the few spur of the moment jokes that I kind of came up with. That's just thought uh, I gotta have something hanging in the background because I don't want it to be, be just Yamato Yamato man sitting in a wooden stuff. And they always have like Chinese symbols and stuff in like movies and things. And I just thought, uh, uh, you know, right right there, I just thought, well, let's have this, these these symbols change a little bit. Because I, I think I was kind of making fun of myself unconsciously because I've had that, had those moments when I added added uh, like a background thing uh, or a thing to the background and I forgot about it and in some it's in some frames of animation then it's not and then I have to go back and correct it so I made it intentionally uh, or I, I I changed it up intentionally for that for that bit. Yeah, so. I, thought it, I thought it was a pretty <laughs> nice addition. But anyway, back to the yeah. uh, Mega Man 2. Uh, after Mega Man 2, when it was finished, um, I, didn't, I in fact, I never even really thought about doing one for Mega Man 3. Like, it wasn't like anything we pre-discussed about doing one for every single Mega Man game. Um, you know, and, and plus, I didn't, yeah. don't even really uh, have... I'm not a fortune teller as far as how long I was going to be making reviews. I didn't know at the time how far and how deep into the series I'd be going. But when it came time around for uh, Mega Man 3, I... Uh, Actually, what happened was, now that I remember it, that was during a momentary lapse of your uh, doing cartoons because of uh, uh, personal reasons. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you. I re remember you asked. You actually asked me to do a cartoon for the Super Mario Brothers uh, review and walkthrough. And at that point, I was. I, I was. I was sort of creatively drained at the time so I, I basically I was just a bit down at the time so that's why we didn't do that one but then you came with Mega Man suggestion for the Mega Man 3 one and I just eh, what the hell yeah actually it was the timing was perfect because it wasn't uh, it wasn't long after that that I did do the Mega Man 3 and it was right around the time when mm -hmm. you said oh all right I'll do the cartoon and I was like oh no shit because I was right about ready to do the review so it was a uh, it was a uh, perfect timing to come back with it and I liked the yeah. uh, the Mega Man 3 one a lot at the time. I remember it was, uh, it, it, it was much better. Uh, it, you know, the jokes were funnier. Uh, there were more shots. Well, shots, you know, more drawings. I'm saying it like as if it was actually filmed. Um, uh, yeah. And well, it was much more, much more effort in lip syncing oh, yeah, and definitely. stuff because everybody was, everybody was, uh, everyone's back was facing the camera on the first one, so I didn't have to animate any mouths. <laughs> But that one was, yeah, it, it needed, for all those little gags, it needed to really just focus on one character at a time. And especially with little details like Snake Man, with all the little snakes crawling on him. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff. Yeah, there, there was a lot more details. You could see the uh, the your animation ability uh, improving as... Uh... <laughs> yes, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, I threw that little explosion thing in there. I thought it was going to look like shit the first time I, when I was drawing it, but then when I put it together and it kind of looked funny. Although I didn't know how to come out of that, that pop of smoke that happens there and that just had to... that You'll notice it cuts it to a black background and it says like a few seconds later and it shows you all, all burnt from the explosion and stuff and coughing. And there was a few things, some some stuff got jumbled around, like Top Man's joke wasn't supposed to be the end, it wasn't even supposed to include the scarf, I don't think, or, or uh, it, it, it somehow it got flipped around so that way it would be the end and it would we would fade out with the uh, Proto Man. Uh, uh, yeah, my memory's a little hazy on the third one, I can't even remember 
what we were thinking on that last part. But I think I we threw I, I, I threw that scarf thing in there because I because it felt like a sort of you know, a sort of moment to kind of fade out of the cartoon and Yeah, the and I think I think we were also a little a bag uh, of chips. We were mm. kinda of stumped on what to do about the ending too. We didn't really know how to to, to to yeah. punch out the end, but uh, and uh, and in fact, I might, I'm, my my memory's a little hazy too on it, but I think I might have even had something, uh, some idea of what to use for a last line, and uh, and then you replaced it with the Proto Man scarf thing, which actually turned out, you know, a few cartoons later, ended up being a an an intricate part of the uh, of the Mega Man Five cartoon. <laughs> it begin. Yeah. Little did we know how important that scarf was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, that scarf. Uh, yeah, well, that fi fifth cartoon that was a kind of an interesting process because I think you, I think you were much more active in kind of coming up with the whole idea for all the setups of the first three cartoons that we did together. So that was the press conference, the uh, brainstorming session, and Ask Pharaoh Man. Although you, of course, took that from one of the earlier cartoons where I had Pharaoh Man have this call-in show. Yeah, that was, uh, that one was, in fact, that was the easiest uh, premise to come up with. For every cartoon, so a lot of times we, we take a little bit of time to, to say, oh, what, uh, you know, what, what do we, what kind of a setup and concept can we have for this video, for this cartoon? And the Mega Man 4 one, I actually, it was a no-brainer. That one I, I thought of a long time before that. In fact, I think that one was, uh, I'd say about 95% of the script was mine on that one. I think I just sent your... Uh, like, the idea just came to my head, popped in my head real quick, and then I sent it off to you, and uh, you made uh, yeah. very little alterations. I think the the one thing you did was, uh, was in particular, was uh, Cossack's voice with the... Uh, uh, making him sound a lot more Russian than, you know, the direct dialogue that I wrote out for him. Well, that, that was... Yeah, that was really the extent of my... Writing <laughs> on that cartoon. <laughs> it was very. It was. It was. It was yeah, I thought it was hugely. Hey, ca oh, sorry. Cap capitalistratos. <laughs> so yeah. Well, that's 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 the sort of thing that I do. I give guys crazy accents. I, you know, I I, I cannot do Doctor Wiley without giving him a crazy German accent. I always thought Cossack. Well, obviously Cossack. He's Russian, so he's got to do. And I've. It, it's funny because I've kind of. Um, I don't know what it is. I've. I I sort of I like doing a Russian accent, but being Finnish, there's sort of this there's a it has a guilty pleasure quality to it. So that's why I've kept it out of my cartoons up till that point. But I thought, well, now it's Doctor Cossack. I gotta do a, a Russian accent for him. There there's no other way. There's really no other way to do it. I thought those two characters played off each other really well, and not to mention that the uh, you know German and Russian are two of my favorite uh, accents. So, so that so that was a pretty that that worked out pretty good from uh, entertainment wise for me and uh, the other yeah. thing that that video I thought it, go ahead yeah I I was thought that that cartoon for Mega Man Four uh, was always a bit was a bit tricky because you had all those guest uh, reviewers yeah, that's, who that's none actually of what I was about to bring up and uh, <laughs> they took up such a long period of time in there and you know some of some of the stuff was kind of funny you know with the the guru guy i can't remember his name uh, oh guru larry with his uh, uh guru larry yeah uh you know the, some of those parts were kind of fun but i was always kind of worried about it you know how am i gonna transition from this sort of really on honest and sort of you know uh, sort of conversation sort of taking place in real life and then go to this cartoon reality of the robot masters to have have a silly bit in there